you are making the world a better place by listening to the Joy of Living podcast. This is your guide to achieving a more purposeful, powerful, and positive life. Join Barry Shore in unlocking the best version of you and becoming happier, healthier, and wealthier. And now, here's your ambassador of joy, Barry Shore. Good day, beautiful, bountiful, beloved, immortal beings and good looking people. Remember, you're good looking because you're always looking for and finding the good. We have good and abundance today and the joy of living. You've tuned in consciously and conscientiously with your humble host, Barry Shore, and you've tuned in for one reason, one reason only. It's a great reason, by the way. It's the best reason in the whole world because you care the most in the entire world about you, Y-O-U, which is great, by the way, because when you become the best you possible, you make the world a better place. You create more bridges of harmony. You create more joy, happiness, peace, and love in the world. And that is represented by our amazing guest today. You're just going to love what we're going to be talking about, what we're going to be doing, because it touches you now and the future and your progeny. And it's really important. We have hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people joining us every week. And thank God you always invite your friends. So we'll have over 360,000 people before we bring on our amazing guest, Kevin Sorbo, to discuss what his role is in movies and what he sees is what's happening in life in America today. Before we do that, as you know, in this show, we talk about the three fundamentals of life. And these three fundamentals are, number one, life. Your life has purpose. When you lead a purpose-driven life, you go MAD. Now, MAD is a wonderful acronym that stands for make a difference. Lead a purpose-driven life, you make a difference in the world. And number three is unlock the power and the secrets of everyday words and terms. Every day, simple example. Right now, this is being carried around the world on this magical, mythical, majestic platform called the internet. Now, if you ask anybody, what does WWW stand for? Invariably, it has to do with the internet. Factually speaking, they're correct. But in our world, the world of the positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant, WWW stands for what a wonderful world. And what a, is a word, right? W-H-A-T-A, -A, what a wonderful world. Whenever you hear the opening bars of that amazing song brought to us by Louis Armstrong, Satchmo, you can hear the only buzz right away. What do you do? What a wonderful world. You smile. You can't help doing it. Now, smile is one of the most important words you're going to integrate, utilize, and leverage in your life because smile stands for seeing miracles in life every day. Seeing miracles in life every day. Now, when I speak to groups, and just thank God the masquerade is over, so I'm talking to large groups again, thousands of people just recently, and I'm telling the story about Barry Shore, and I'm using the word smile, seeing miracles in life every day. People raise their hands, hey, Barry Shore, Barry Shore, I've been out for hours, I haven't seen any miracles. And I ask them, are you here? Can you hear? Can you stand still? I can't do that. Can you walk? I can barely do that. You have water to drink, you have food to eat, you have a place to sleep, you have family, you have friends. Every single one of those is a miracle. And what's the proof? The simplest proof, a million people didn't get out of bed this morning. You know why? They died. By definition, if you're watching or you're listening, you didn't. You have an obligation to live exuberantly. So imagine the following. Standing up in the morning, hale and hearty, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound, and that evening be in the hospital totally, completely paralyzed. And not from an automobile accident, not a spinal injury, a rare disease took over my body, which I never heard of the day before, and rendered me a quadriplegic. Nothing in my body moved. All I could do was blink my eyes. 144 days in the hospital, two years in a hospital bed in my own home. I couldn't turn over by myself. I was in a wheelchair for four years. I had braces on my legs, my hips to my ankles. That was progress. Thank God today I'm able to be vertical and ambulatory with the help of a seven foot walking one. So I'm a tripod, not a biped. I still can't walk up a curb by myself. I can't walk up a stair by myself. Now I've helped 12 hours a day, seven days a week. But you hear my voice, positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant, all because of one word smile, <laughs> seeing miracles in life every day. 
I got to tell you a quick story. My eight-year-old niece comes over to me a few weeks ago and says, Uncle Barry, Uncle Barry, can we spell smile, S-M-I-E-L? And I thought about it, smile, smile, sounds the same, why not? I asked her, how come? She says, because then it would stand for seeing miracles in everyday life. Out of the mouth of babes, an eight-year-old. But what was she doing? She was creating the kind of world that she wants to live in. Now, CREATE is a wonderful acronym that stands for causing rethinking, enabling all to excel. Thinking, we call it neuro-linguistic programming. You are a control of your thoughts. You choose how to respond in any given situation. So the six most important words you can ever utilize, internalize, and leverage in your life are choice, not chance determines your destiny. Choice, not chance, determines your destiny. Now, I do want to warn everybody in advance, those new people who are coming on listening to us, over 30,000 every week join, and uh, for Kevin, that I do use a lot of four-letter words. Now, the four-letter words, of course, that I use in our world, or the positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant are love, life, hope, grow, free, gift, pray, play, swim, Four-letter words. And I even use the four-letter F-U word because it's fun and there's a shock value. And the four-letter F-U word that I use is fun. F-U, capital N, capital N. But people right away say, hey, Barry Shaw, fun's only spelled with three letters. Not in our world. The world of the positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant. Fun is spelled F-U, capital N, capital N. So after the show, when you see your family and friends, you point your finger and you have, say, smile on your face. Remember that stands for you. Twinkle in your eyes. Say, F-U, everybody. Remember to add right away, capital N, capital N. They say, where'd you get that? I say, I listen to Barry Shore, and he wants to teach the world to F you. Capital N, capital N. You have fun in life. You can make a difference in life. You live life with purpose. And before we bring on amazing Kevin, who's going to share with us some great insights into what his life has been about and what he's doing and continues to do to help our great country of America and the world. I'm going to urge everybody to use the two most powerful words in the English language three times a day, every single day for the rest of your life. Because you do this, it will help you, your family, your friends, and all living beings. And these two words are, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank stands for to harmonize and network kindness. To harmonize and network kindness. The Dalai Lama has been quoted as saying, I read in his writings, be kind whenever possible. He says, it's always possible. So imagine you go in your coffee shop, you order your fancy latte, you sit down, somebody brings it to you, you say, thank you. You go to the coffee shop, you order a fancy latte, you sit down, a few minutes go, nobody brings it to you. You go to the counter, you say, I'm sorry, we forgot, we're busy, we'll bring it to you, sit down, a few more minutes go, by, somebody brings it, so say, thank you. You're walking out of the coffee shop, it's raining out, and somebody holds the door open for you. You say, thank you. You're walking out of the coffee shop, and it's raining, and somebody slams the door on you. You say, thank you. You're in traffic, you're late for an appointment, and somebody cuts you off. You say, thank you. You get up in the middle of the night, and you stub your toe, and it hurts. You say, yes, thank you, <laughs> to harmonize and network kindness. I can't think of anybody that inspires more kindness, keep inspiring noble deeds than our wonderful Kevin Sorbo. Uh, there he is. Yay, Kevin. Hey, how Please are you? Tell the world. Hello to 362,820 people around the world. Maybe it's 321 now. I don't know. But welcome, world. How y'all doing? And that was the longest introduction I've ever seen in my life. And did it, <laughs> did it move you? It was very good. I like all the positive attitude. It's a good thing. In, in, this, in this negative, hateful, divisive world, we need more of that. There's no question about it. And that is why I am honored and humbled that Kevin has decided to join us today, because he understands that we do have a joy deficit in the world, yeah. and he knows that we can create a joy surplus, right? Very true. Very true. Yep. Let's it's go all about right attitude. You can always change your attitude. It's pretty easy to do, but people make it hard for themselves. So let's go right to Kevin. I'm going to dig, jump right in because I want him to speak, not me. And tell everybody that joy stands for journey of you. That's what joy is. Kevin Sorbo, <laughs> what a journey you have. I don't know where you want to begin. You want to begin now? You want to begin with Hercules and Andromeda? You, have, you know, if people don't know Kevin Sorbo, you're not living on the planet. You can Google him all later. Everything you want to know about him, go to the website, my website, barryshore.com. There'll be stuff there. Let's You choose wherever you want to begin because 
it's a beautiful journey and you're making an impact with your wife, your kids and everybody you know. Talk to us. Well, I was, uh, I'll go back to where I started. I mean, I grew up in a little town called Mound, Minnesota. It's about 25 miles west of Minneapolis on the beautiful shores of Lake Minnetonka. Um, lake Minnetonka is, a, is an amazing lake. It was, the summers are just unbelievable. It's always voted like in the top 10 boating lakes in the country. Um, it's got just hundreds and hundreds of miles of shoreline. There's about, there's got to be at least about 12 different bays. I think it all connected by channels that, that just travel. It just, it's just phenomenal. In my little town, we were on the Western shore of Lake Minnetonka and we were home to Tonka toys for those people old enough to remember Tonka toys. So, uh, it was um, a great little factory of a little town of 7,000 people. I probably employed about, you know, 2,000 people there. But it was a great little place to grow up. My dad was a, was a junior high school teacher, seventh and eighth grade math and biology. My mom was a nurse, but a stay-at-home mom pretty quickly because she uh, I'm the fourth of five kids. And uh, I grew up, I, I was a good student. I was a good jock. I, I was football, basketball, baseball, golf guy. I loved all sports. And... Um, I was 11 years old when I fell in love with acting. I went to a play at the Guthrie Theater, a very famous theater in Minneapolis, where a lot of a lot of actors not only start there, but a lot of Broadway people come out that way, and a lot of plays start there before moving to Broadway. Probably the most successful one, Lion King, that went 25 years on Broadway, I think. And uh, I saw I was fifth grade. I saw The Merchant of Venice, and it was Shakespeare. Now, number one, remember I was in fifth grade, and it was Shakespeare, so I know what, what the heck they were saying. But I was totally blown away by it all. And that sort of uh, laid the seat for me to want to be an actor. Uh, and, I want to um, put you on pause just for a moment because sure. you've already touched some things. Look, I'm of age. So Tonka Toys, hello. Yes. <laughs> Going up in Minnesota. So you want to tell us that the, the phrase, uh, you know, does a play in Peoria really didn't matter. It wasn't Peoria. It was really in Minneapolis or the, the, the theater area. That's where out of town was. That, that was where things happened. And to touch on The Merchant of Venice as a play that sort of sparked you was very interesting also, because in a town, let's say, of 7,000 people, I don't think you met any Jews. So here you have a play about another group of people, and even though you didn't know was what they were really saying, because you're only 10 years old, but yeah. you knew it was something different, and it, it grabbed you. In other words, Shakespeare grabbed you without having to know what the words were. You felt the power of theater running oh, yeah. through your veins. That's amazing. That's a spark. Oh, no question. No question. I mean, the, the seed was set for me. Um, but you're wrong. We, we didn't, we, I mean, we were a typical Lutheran slash Swedish slash German town, mostly Lutheran churches, St. John's Lutheran Church. But there were, there were, um, uh, Sean Levy was one of my dear friends. He was Jewish. <laughs> and when I found out that they had seven days, you know, of, of the whole thing during Christmas, my Christmas time ago, you got seven days of presents. I went home. I was like, mom, can we be Jewish? I mean, look, they got seven <laughs> days. Of the, of they'd celebrate, you know? So, but uh, Sean and I, Sean, I knew Sean forever. Sean was on the football team with me. We, he always he always made the joke that he was an offensive lineman. He said, "I never missed a block. I never missed a block." You know, but <laughs> but um, but that did lay the groundwork for me. And and, and um, you know, start screwing around with school plays and stuff. But it really wasn't until I got into college level, read a double uh, major in business, marketing, and advertising. But took a minor in drama, and um, I just I just loved it. I mean, it just it was there. I started doing a lot of a lot of commercials. Uh, a lot of people don't realize Minneapolis is home to a lot of national headquarters like Best Buy and Target and uh, Dairy Queen and uh, um, gosh, Pillsbury, General Mills, 3M. So I did a lot of commercials during my college years that gave me that all important Screen Actors Guild card. I had that SAG card before I made the big move to Los Angeles. So I had no problem getting a commercial agent in L.A. That was to me, that was like heaven. And I got to tell you, it was. Um, an interesting thing about that LA, I didn't know a soul. I, I, be, I got my beat up old rental car, loaded up what I could, you know, said goodbye to my mom and dad. I'm making this big move. And um, uh, I stayed at a, at a friend of a friend's place. And the very first audition I had was in that first week of living there because I already, they knew I was coming out already. And I booked it and it shot in Sydney, Australia. So I'm not, I'm in LA less than a week and I'm on a plane to Australia and I end up falling in love down there. So I stayed for eight months. I did two plays in Austin, Sydney. I did seven commercials. 
lived on Bondi Beach. That was the beach they used for the 2000 Olympic uh, volleyball games. Right. And I, it was like, it was like unbelievable to me. And uh, I'm one of the few guys I know in Hollywood, because um, I lived there a long time, that never had to work another job. I had guys selling cars, buddies of mine that, you know, were, were bartending, were bouncing, were waiters, whatever. I, I shot over 150 commercials before I got my Hercules gig. So I worked really very fortunate and incredibly well. Um, able to pay all my bills and everything and not worry about that. And then when I got my break with Hercules, of course, that just took off. But, so let's, um, you let's know, I was very blessed not to have to do any other jobs. Yeah, let's unpack a few things here because it is. Wonderful. I know I covered a lot right there. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's fabulous. Because remember, we have an international audience. Um, at least 60 percent of the audience is outside the United States. So for people in China, India, I mean, they're going to be Googling a Minnetonka, Tonka, what are they talking about? But it's great because what Kevin is telling us is he lives and did live the American dream. In other words, yeah. to be able to do what it is that you love and make sure that you're, you've aligned your values with who you are and to be able to do that in a way that helps others and benefit yourself. As he said, he, he packed up, he drove to Los Angeles. Okay, that wasn't uh, in 1990. That was a different time and different space, right? And you didn't have internet. We're talking to people who don't understand the digital native. No internet, no, I mean, to call long distance was a big thing, back calling back home. And he gets to Los Angeles, he has a couple of gigs and right away, well, let's go to Sydney. In those days, by the way, you couldn't fly directly from LA to Sydney. You had to stop, right? No, I got. I flew direct. Oh, you flew. Oh, what? What year was that? Nineteen eighty-six. Oh, that's why. Okay, I'm sorry. Because when I started going to the Orient, um, yeah. I, I I started going to the Orient in, in 1979. We used to have to fly from Los Angeles to Seattle, and then Seattle over to Hong Kong, and then to Bangkok. So, okay. Wow. By 1987, thank God you're right. You it, was, it, was, it, was, it was definitely it was definitely direct on Qantas Airlines. Right. Okay. So this is wonderful. So now he's, he's going to Sydney. And by the way, when he goes to Bondi Beach, those people in Australia are, share, are you know, jumping up and down. Now, I've been to Bondi Beach. I've, cl I've climbed the Sydney Bridge and stuff. But in Australia, it's really cool because your accent people love. In other words, <laughs> you're the foreigner with American accent down in Australia. So, wow, mate, let's do some Barbie and have a lot of fun. This, hey, open your mouth and talk to them in, in American, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, but I, okay, so I, I, I jumped a little bit there because I thought you wanted to get straight to later. But here's, here's what happened to me, actually. After college, I was headed to L.A., but um, I, I did, the, I did the, the greatest sin of meeting a girl that I fell in love with. And um, she was moving to Dallas, Texas. And I already had two buddies playing football down there at uh, Southern Methodist University, SMU University there in downtown Dallas. So I said, you know, it was a hot market right now for commercials. So I followed her down there. She was a big international model and stuff. And so I followed her down there, um, stayed with one of my buddies, Jeff, who was playing football there. I played high school football with him and um, was there about a year and a half. And then my uh, girlfriend at that time was going to go to uh, back to Europe, to Italy. She says, before you go to L.A., just come and spend one summer with me in Milan. And I looked at, you know, why not? This were growing years for me, entertaining years. So we flew to Italy and um, pretty much walking down the street there on my own, uh, Gianni Versace saw me. And... Uh, <laughs> um, said who are who are you who are you and i said well you know i'm an actor from la she goes no you must be in my shows and do photos for my line you're fantastic and all this kind of stuff and so i got an agent there ended up living there for eight months and then i went to paris after that for six months then i went to munich germany for a year and a half <laughs> then i went to zurich for three months and then hamburg for three months and then london three i ended up spending three years in europe before finally making a move to LA, but the LA thing happened when, um, when I, I knew that was going to happen anyway, I'm back home for Christmas and then made the move out there then. But so I, sk I skipped about, a, I skipped about a four and a half year plan there that uh, I actually didn't get full time in LA until I got to be about 20, 20, almost 28 years old. Which so, is a, bit, a little bit older for what 
people yeah not, not not for a guy though i mean 28 i still look like i was 22 23 i, I was pretty uh -huh. lucky that way but women they treat women worse than they treat guys i mean um i i, I just you know what i i have no regrets to spend three years in europe i had a blast doing it it made me grow up and um it was just a great learning experience for me so um but yeah i mean i i definitely i was 27 when i got there i was like i was still i, I was still like four months away from turning 28 but um, I was very fortunate to keep working very well over there. I did a lot of commercials over there um, in Munich. I formed a, a, my own uh, my own theater. We put on plays, and then I formed a uh, basketball league as well. So we had a nine team basketball league, and and <laughs> Munich was a good market for me because I even though I'm Norwegian, I, I'm 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 you know I'm six three. I got blue eyes. I, I kind of fit into the the gene. I was going to say there. you were pro <laughs> yeah. Union. So I worked I worked a lot, you know, um, in in that in that world. So it was it was good, and it, the, it was a better money market too. They don't pay that much in Paris and in France. <laughs> I mean Paris and in, in Italy. But um, uh, Germany paid very well. And now let's talk about America. And like you said, they don't treat women very well, meaning not just, I mean, it's Hollywood. In other words, it's, it's less about the human and more about the, either the box office or the ego. Because Hollywood is a unique island unto itself, I think. Yeah. Oh, no um, question. No well, question. You're, you know, you've been... By the way, just so people know a data point, <laughs> Kevin is about to make his 70th movie. He's wrapping up seven zero. And we're talking about commercials, 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 but movie number 70. I mean, he's he's active all the time. He doesn't just make a movie every couple of years. He makes sometimes two or three or four movies in a year. And um, his wife is equally active with him and such. But I, I just want to delve a little bit into your situation vis-a-vis -vis Hollywood was, uh, I think, unique. Uh, first of all, as you said, as a man, but also uh, you were not pulled into that vortex called me. Maybe a little <laughs> bit, maybe a little bit, but. Well, yeah, I think, I think you know, the, the biggest difference, I think, where you grow up and how you grow up, you know, and how my parents were. My parents were always, um, I also said my dad ruled the family with soft thunder hands, you know, and uh, they they promoted hard work and all, all of us kids. I and mean, we all five of my my four siblings, we all we all took different roads in life. Um, but all of us have always worked hard. And my dad instilled that at a young age in, in all of us. And I mean, when I was nine years old, I started my own paper route. I got up at 430 in the morning, six days a week for seven years and delivering newspapers in Minnesota's, you know, 30 below windshield <laughs> winters, you know, and uh, I, I learned the value of hard work and the value of making your own money at a young age. I, I, I bought my first car in high school with the money I earned. I bought, an, you know, an, an old, still in pretty good shape uh, uh, Ford Mustang. And that was my baby. That was my car in 11th and 12th grade. You know, 19, 1967 Mustang. It was awesome. You know, you remember what the bodies of those cars look, they were sexy Hello, looking cars. Oh, yes. You know, and, and today, if you kept those things in shape, I mean, if I had kept that today and not let the Minnesota winters and salt and, you know, beat it up on the winter roads, I mean, those cars sell for two, three hundred thousand dollars today. You know, back <laughs> then there, I think twenty five hundred bucks or something. You know, right, so. the, the point that, that I want to emphasize that you brought out, I was hoping you would, is that <clears throat> small town Minnesota is not just something that it's in a novel. This was real. Mm. This was families intact oh, yeah. and, and, and with values that said, we understand that working hard is important. Working smart is important. Mm -hmm. Being kind, generous, giving, et cetera. These are not just ideas. These are fundamental to our world. And I think that part of what happens in Hollywood is that there may be some lip service to that, but that's not how people tend to live. Am I correct on that? Oh, no, no question. I mean, I look, I grew up with an amazing safety net. I mean, I grew up in town where the teachers taught the subjects they were, they were, they were, they were being paid to teach. They were in teaching you how to vote or how to, or, or not to believe in God. They were teaching you math and science and physics and history, whatever else. Um, you know, today's world, we want to change history, which is just crazy to me. And uh, we also had, I mean, we had, you know, 
5,000 people would show up at our high school football games. I mean, just the support within the community for school, athletics, my, my teachers, my coaches, all that stuff certainly had a way of forming who I am today. And my friends, my best friends are people I've known since grade school. And we still get together every year. I just had 10 of them down here for Super Bowl week uh, because every year they want to get out of Minnesota anyway. So right. they left Minnesota, it was 16 below. They landed here, it was 84 degrees. So, <laughs> <laughs> but um, we still get together every year. And um, we have, you know, tight bonded relationships with similar upbringings. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's a whole different thing. Hollywood is, is all about, you can always smell the desperation in a room filled with Hollywood people. You can, you can smell, I mean, you can smell that they, the anger, the hate, the envy, the jealousy, and uh, you know, they, they might be shaking your hand, but they got a knife in their back hand behind their back. I mean, it's a, it's a very cutthroat business. I, I can complain about it forever. And people say, why are you in it? Because I love the creative process. I got stuck in it early. I've been doing my own thing for a long time. I mean, I have Sorbo Studios. Please go to SorboStudios.com because Hollywood basically booted me out about 10 years ago because uh, being, uh, being a Christian, being a conservative is apparently like being a double leper to them, you know? So it's very sad that, I mean, I don't hold that kind of anger, harbor that kind of anger to somebody who has a, a, a different religious point of view or a different political affiliation. I don't care about that stuff, but we've made it a big issue in today's world. And everybody just wants to fight, fight, fight. And we're just growing further and further apart right now. And uh, it's just it's just sad to me. See what's going on. I mean, I'm a live and let live guy. Let people be, let them believe what they want to believe. I'm happy to have a real discussion. But a lot of times, all it does is come down to some yelling match. And I'm going, why are we yelling about this? Just talk about it, you know. But people just have anger and throw their labels at you, but they can't ever defend their labels. That's all they got are labels, you know. And it's just it's it's weird to me. But uh, Hollywood is a Hollywood's a strange beast. There's no question. Not only. <clears throat> did you survive? I don't want to even, I don't like the term, but you thrived. And part of the thriving was, I think you used the right word, creativity. If you remember in my introduction, I used the word create, mm. causing rethinking, enabling all to excel. To be involved in the creative process really is part and parcel, I believe, of being a religious person and will flaunt, better return, a conservative. In other words, whatever your religion is, if you're religious, you have a belief in the creator and the creator giving us the opportunity to express ourselves in a meaningful way. And as a Christian and as a conservative, say politically conservative, you, you've put a stand and said these are values that we value and we will live them we want to live by them so when you shake the hand it's not that there's a knife in the other hand there's a bouquet of flowers and mm. they smell good and they look good so let's talk about what happened with your first big role the hercules role and then just move quickly through because i want to talk about where you are today sure vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, two awards that i'm giving you <laughs> you get the um <clears throat> the z award which i call the zuckerberg award for being banned from facebook bravo kevin thank you bravo. thank you okay you get the z award and you also get the li award he's banned from linkedin <laughs> i mean that is we, i'll call those badges of honor because well, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing to me because I was posting the truth and I was posting other people's comments to say, hey, these are doctors over here. There's 10,000 of them signed this thing saying masks are kind of useless. Right. What are you guys saying? That's misinformation. I go, I'm, these are doctors. I'm not a doctor. They're right. saying that mask, and obviously it ends up being truth. They're, they're pretty useless. They do nothing. <laughs> I mean, the, the hospitals are filled right now with people who have had both shots, booster, double mask. And they're still getting COVID. We have been shammed beyond sham. This is a 99.7% chance of recovery if you get COVID. 99.7% chance. And what have they done? They've destroyed the world. They've destroyed the middle class. They've made the divisiveness and anger anymore. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, the, the Zuckerberg thing. I mean, I do. I, I'm still on Twitter. And I posted on Twitter recently. I said, follow me on Twitter. It's Case Orbs. I do very funny, sarcastic, one and two sentence deals. And I said, hey, does anybody have any more conspiracy theories? Because mine keep coming true. 
So it's like, come on, this is crazy what we're doing right now to the world and, and still just pushing this agenda that is so weird. There's something going on here, people, and we need to wake up to it. I say the sheep are lost. I'm not even worried about the sheep anymore. I'm here to wake up the lions. Lions, you yeah. can't be of opening your mouths and speaking the truth. LinkedIn took me down, had to be the funniest things. But I've got a lot of trolls out there that follow me and just follow me to hate me. You know, I can, on, on Twitter, I can say, hey, beautiful day in the golf course today. We raise money for the Boys and Girls Club. Screw you, Sorba. Hope you die. Hope your family die. I mean, I look at it, I go, they keep those people on? I don't post anything about it. I hope people die. And I hope, you know, I love, I love, I, I rarely read them. My, my son reads them to me. He goes, here's another one. I guess, I guess one guy, every time he says, you're a has-been, I'm going, well, I'm shooting three or four movies a year. If that's a has-been, I'll take it. Right. I'll take it. <laughs> I mean, we can't all have Tom Cruise careers. God bless him, you know, but I've had a pretty good career. So it's <laughs> like, I think in the history of Hollywood, I don't think many people have worked as much as I have. There's a list in there, but I think I'm probably in the top 5% of the history of Hollywood actors that have had the amount of work that I've had. And uh, not every actor can do Academy Award winning movie because they only... They only elect about five or six of those a year. So I'm okay with that. I still got a career and um, I'm still working. So I'm grateful for that. Again, let's go back to that idea of being creative. Sure. See, what part of your purpose is that you're there to be creative. You're not you're just to, I want to make a movie so we can make what? some money. We're here to be creative. You know what they're upset? Well, my movies are in the three to $4 million range. You know, that's catering budget and Pirates of the Caribbean. Those are $300 million movies. But I do movies that make, that have love and laughter and redemption and hope and survival and, and friendship and laughter and that, things that Hollywood Oh my doesn't gosh, you mean watch. things like we used to watch? Oh, wow. I know, I know. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> and those are the kind of movies that I keep doing. And I'm, yeah, I've done 70 movies to date and are all of them good? No, there's a dozen that absolutely suck, but I didn't know they're going to turn out that way. But there's a lot of good movies in there with good value. And I'm, and I'm honored to be part of that. And uh, I think a lot of movies out there people haven't seen because we don't have the budget to promote them. We rely on word of mouth. I did a movie called God's Not Dead. $2 million budget made $140 million. That's wait a minute, a wait a on that note, on that note, sure. we, have, we have sponsors that love us talking about making some money. So we're going to take a very brief commercial break. We'll be All back right. with more Kevin Sorbo because you want to know more about waking up the lions. We'll be right back <laughs> after this brief message. Imagine the kind of place you would want to shop for your favorite fur baby pet. Honest pets.co. Well, you found it. Honestpets.co. Not .com, .co. This is your go-to spot for the best, the cleanest pet treats that exist anywhere on the planet. All of the brands go through a rigorous review to make sure they meet the high standards of cleanliness, health benefits, and naturalness. This site was started by a husband and wife team, and it's veteran-owned, and that care about pets, especially dogs and cats, and coming soon, bird treats. These are very nice young people who really care about making a difference because a portion of proceeds go to support veteran organizations with a focus on service dogs. This is the place where you want to go, you want to tell your friends, this has the finest, yummiest, freshest, all-natural treats and stuff for your fur baby. So go there, honestpets.co honestpets.co. Do it now. As you may know, I'm 72 and recovering from being a quadriplegic at age 55. And to stay active, I swim two miles per day, six times per week. As you can imagine, I know a thing or two about aches and pains. And until recently, I thought my aches and pains were a fact of life that I had to deal with every day, which is part of the process of getting older and staying active. Then I tried 100% drug-free relief factor. I have been taking their convenient packs three times a day. And folks, I got to tell you, I'm feeling noticeably better. Relief factor has given me more oomph and less oomph. The secret is it's four key ingredients. Each one supports a different metabolic pathway that your body uses to respond to the inflammation that is the cause of many hip, back, shoulder, or knee pains. If you have everyday aches and pains too, remember relief factor is 100% drug-free and designed to be taken every day. So you get out and stay out of pain. 
to make it as easy as possible for you to try Relief Factor, they created the three-week quick start and program and discounted it to just $19.95. That's right, just $19.95. So do what I did. Go to relieffactor.com slash joy and order a three-week quick start for yourself. You'll be glad you did. Again, to claim your three-week quick start for $19.95, that's all, go to relieffactor.com slash joy. You'll thank me. Good day, beautiful, bountiful, beloved immortal beings and good looking people. Remember, you're good looking because you're always looking for and finding the good. We have found good in abundance. Our cup runneth over with good two-legged being named Kevin Sorbo. You know him in many different roles. And what the role he's talking about right now is the role of being good, kind, generous, giving, messaging, and making a difference in the world. He's a madman. He makes a difference along with his wife and his kids. And he lives what he speaks about. This is really the key to life, to make sure that you are in alignment with your thoughts, your words, and your deeds, and to be able to be a what I call a cog, a conduit of good, a child of God. So we're just talking about movies and promotion and such. And I think most people have no idea that if you have a budget, like you said, $300 million for X, Y, and Z, uh, it costs X to make a movie. Let's call it $100 million or 150. But it, you need twice that much for the promotion. <laughs> it's all, a lot of it's in the marketing. And if you don't promote, you know, we've got a country of 300 plus million people and you got a worldwide market, breaking through noise is not simple. So you're right, you make a movie for a couple million dollars and if you can hit it, you got 140. Uh, but a lot of the movies need to be seen, even if it's what we used to call, what do we call those, uh, art house movies. Right. When I was growing up, they called art house movies. Yeah. You know, in, independent and, and things like that. But those are the ones that actually touch the soul. Yeah. And that's, what well, that's the reason why I wanted to be an actor. I mean, I grew up, my mom, I would sit with my mom when I was a kid, watch these old black and white movies with Jimmy Stewart and Catherine Hepburn and Cary Grant. And uh, I, I, I love those movies, you know, and th those are the kind of movies I want to do. Movies, I, you know, I like a good roller coaster ride too, like an Avengers movie, but it's, you know, 50% visual effects or more. But I want to, people don't walk out and go, wow, what great character development. You know, I mean, you're laughing. <laughs> it's great to have that escape. I want, I want to create movies that, that people can relate to the person on the screen or they know people like that. They walk out and make them think a little bit and talk about it. And those are the movies I'm going to keep making, you know? And so um, if that offends people, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's, that's too bad, you know, and, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm going to backtrack a little bit because you did ask about Hercules. Um, yes. When I got that series, by the way, it was seven auditions over a two month period. They, they auditioned 2,800 actors in North America. But I role. want to understand something because what you just told us as a data point is fascinating right. to people. People sometimes I would think, think, oh, you go and you do a reading and right. say, okay, yeah, we want you. No, listen to what he's oh. saying. <laughs> this is a process, not an event. It was 2,800 2, actors after I got the role. That's something they told me the audition. And over, over the two months of seven times coming in, I uh, got down to the last three guys, myself and two other guys. And when I did the reading at the Universal Studios there, they had about 50 people in the room. So they got all these cooks in the kitchen going to decide if you're going to have a career or not in that particular uh, uh, genre. And it was only just going to be five two-hour movies. So it was a year in New Zealand. And um, I loved the script. You know, when my agent initially told me about it, I said, I'm a big guy. I was 6'3", 225, athletic. And I was like going, yeah, but they're going to want some steroid guy like they've always used. They're going to want 280 pounds, no neck. No, 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 no. They want an athlete. They want a decathlon kind of guys what they said and sure enough most of the guys that went up there were guys some guys I knew that played in a basketball league with me and stuff so when I got the role I went down to New Zealand to film it Anthony Quinn played Zeus for those who are too young don't know Anthony Quinn please look him up <laughs> six times Academy Award nomination two two wins the Greek Dorber the Greek Guns of Navarone uh oh. um um um, um the, the yes. Lawrence of Arabia I right. mean there's so many amazing I mean so many movies that this guy did and um great stories we had dinner once a week every week for a year but then halfway through the shooting of the third movie Universal Studios called up and said we're gonna make it a series we love what we see by season three we were the most watched tv show in the world in 176 countries this thing had just taken off 
By the end of season seven, I was about to sign a contract for seasons eight, nine, and 10. But I got a very interesting call, phone call by a woman named Majel Roddenberry, who's Gene Roddenberry's widow. And for those who don't know Gene Roddenberry, he created Star Trek. So she said, Kevin, with Gene were still alive, he would love it that you were the next captain he ever created. He wrote a series in 1969 called Andromeda with Captain Dylan Hunt. I said, Majel, stop. I've seen every episode of Star Trek at least 50 times. I am sold. I'm in. I did five years in Andromeda. We were in 156 countries, big hit. And then I went on to do all the movies I've been doing now. So it's, it's been an amazing ride. And uh, I, you tell me when you want me to tell you the things I got coming up. I have four movies coming out this year uh, that I shot last year. And I got three lined up this year. And one of them, I leave for Israel. I'll be shooting in May, all of May. I'll be taking off. So well, now that you brought in the Holy Land, let's <laughs> come on, baby. Let's go a little bit deep. Okay, first of all, quick question. Are you yeah. bringing the whole family to Israel or just you? No, I did. I shot a document. This is going to be another documentary. I, I've gotten into documentaries lately. I've done about eight now in the last five years. And I'm Whoa. starting to be the guy that they want on screen to interview the scholars, but also be the guy that narrates it. And it's been a fabulous road. I shot a documentary there um, two and a half years ago with John Lennox. Now, John Lennox is a, is a retired math professor of Oxford University. Um, he holds like five doctorates, speaks like six languages. He's a, he's a world-known now uh, apologist. He's debated all the great atheists of the world, like Dawkins and Singer and Hitchens and those guys. So it's called Against the Tide, and it's proving God in a world of science. So we shot three weeks in Oxford, England, two weeks in, in Israel, and it was unbelievable. So I highly recommend Against the Tide. Actually, I'd like to correct you on one thing. Yeah. Fully, fully believable. Yes. Point. Fully believable. <laughs> oh, this guy, this guy is amazing, dude. He's, he's, he's just such a, such a brilliant, brilliant man. And then, and then I took, uh, I went online and we posted onto the fan site. Uh, the first 50 people to sign up will come on a trip with us to Israel. And, um, the, you know, it's not cheap. I mean, people got to pay to get it. They got to fly there. But I said this, we're going to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. We filled it up right away. So I took the whole family with, we had, we had two weeks there. It was unbelievable. And um, I'm going back again in May, and I'm going back in in May of 2023. So a year from now, for those out there that want to join us, uh, go to SorboStudios.com. We're doing it again. So save up. We're going to go a year from this May, May 2023, and we're going to go again. We have three amazing guides. We're getting the same guys, uh, two men and a women that are phenomenal, that born there, raised there. They know the country inside and out and the history of it. And uh, you guys will be treated to a feast you'll never believe. It's just it's phenomenal, and I'm looking forward to going again. They just unearthed the oldest temple they've ever found in an archaeological dig, and uh, so the guys, those guys, they're bringing me in. I've I've become I've become the the narrator guy for documentaries, which is kind of an honor. It's it's so wondrous to hear the procession of growth, let's say from uh, commercials, and yeah. then into uh, TV and to movies very and very i'm i'm a 13 year overnight success come on right exactly that, <laughs> by the, that, that's what i was trying to get out that's the point isn't it beautiful and it's again creativity that's what you're about <clears throat> i love that line the sheep are lost but we need to awaken the lions yeah. it's really about making sure that every single person hearing this recognizes what i call you ready for this, Kevin? Sure. Learn to love dog poop. <laughs> Did Barry Shaw say dog poop? Yes, because dog poop is a great acronym. You can use this, Kevin. Dog I'm going to steal for it. <laughs> doing of good, power of one person. When you recognize that when you speak in good and you think in good and you act in good, you're creating a tsunami of goodness in the world that cannot be stopped. Yeah. And the power of one person, we're listening to working with one person right now who has shifted the world. Now, most people, by the way, Kevin, when they hear the word shift, I don't know why, but they drop that F and stuff happens. You got to keep the F in shift. You can shift your perspective and you can really make a difference in the world. That's what he's doing. He's a madman, whether it's in Israel and with his family, his friends, and, and think about what he said, friends going back decades because when you are rooted in truth rooted in goodness rooted in values 
then you become part of what we call the immortal eternal being. And that's the genius I think of America. We are the beacon of light to the world. We're still the best hope for the world. That's President Reagan's comment. That was Lincoln's comment. And I think that that is what animates me that there is not just hope for America, but there are people, power of one person, poop, reaching out one to another, to another, to another, to another, linking across the world. There's nothing that can stop goodness. Not possible. You just told us you're narrating in Israel. Hello. The story didn't end thousands of years ago. It's a continuous story. Am I correct? Oh, no, no question. No question. And it's, and it's, and for me, I mean, I, I love this journey I'm on because it's something I never thought I'd be doing. Uh, about 10 years ago, I started doing a lot of speaking events. I never thought I'd be doing speaking events. And that really kicked off when I wrote my book called True Strength. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm doing about 15 speaking events a year. I get invited about 100 speaking events a year. I just don't have the time to do it. So <laughs> I, I, I pick out about, you know, a dozen to 15 or so, and I, I, I do what I can with that. But uh, it's, been, it's been an amazing ride, and it's not over yet. I'm not n anywhere near retirement. I love what I do, and I'm going to keep doing it. And um, like I said, I've got a number of other projects coming down the road, and I'm just going to keep busy. And let's be blunt. Your wife is a great adjunct to what you do oh and your kids as well. I mean, without without Sam, there wouldn't be a real Kevin. I'm oh, saying no, it. No, there's no question. I think, <laughs> I don't know how I would have survived without her annoying, uh, her nagging, you know? <laughs> so it's like, you know, and her overwhelming optimism. You know? Right. So it's like all of it combined together, it works quite well. And we, we're homeschool advocates. My wife does a lot of homeschool speaking. She's got a number of books out on that. And uh, my kids are rock stars. They're, they're awesome. And I'm not surprised that, my two boys are kind of following my footsteps. I mean, the, the middle one wants to be an engineer and he's bright as my wife is, but the other one is, is more like me in terms of wanting to travel and see things. And he's, uh, he's uh, already been in a couple movies. He was just my last one. I just, I just directed the, this one of the movies coming out this year, uh, just this past um, October, November, I directed and acted in the next Left Behind uh, book. For those who don't know Left Behind, they sold 80 million copies. Right. Uh, LaHaye and Jenkins wrote these things together. And uh, this one's called Rise of the Antichrist. And that's coming out in theaters this year. My other movie, Miracle in East Texas, is coming out that I directed as well. Um, finally coming out. A wonderful movie, true story set in 1930 about two con men played by myself and John Ratzenberger. Luke Gossett Jr. is in it. Tyler Maines in it. My wife's in it. She's awesome in it. True story set in 1930 about two guys that would go to Oklahoma and Texas, wooing widows out of out of their money on fake oil wells until they strike the largest oil fund in the history of the world in Kilgore, Texas. And then I've got um, the, Reagan, the Ronald Reagan movie. Dennis Quaid plays the uh, president. I play his pastor in that one. And then my next documentary uh, that we finished called, I love this title. It deals with the Last Supper and the Disciples. It's called Eating with the Enemy. <laughs> and and, and uh, uh, it'll be out. It, people can go to eatingwiththeenemy.com right now and see the trailer for it. It's a very moving, touching uh, uh, trailer. And that's going to be out probably around in, in the fall as well. And I narrated that one. And the same group of guys I did one with uh, last year that was the most watched documentary on Amazon called uh, Before the Wrath. Beforetherath.com is another good place to check that one out. So I'm going to sprinkle a little pixie dust here and just throw oh, an idea. It. And that is uh, <clears throat> The Daily Wire, thedailywire.com, uh, Ben Shapiro and his cohorts, uh, because they understand that the culture is movies, video and such. And I would just urge you to consider, unless you're already talking with them, that you collaborate and find some mechanism to speak with each other because this is the path we all want to be on. We want to awaken the lions. We need that. So if you're not speaking to them, let me know because I can open up that pathway. Um, we, we need to touch these tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions, not billions of people around the planet with the energy of the Sorbo. <laughs> <laughs> So before we, we wrap up this uh, time, and it, I just, I'm so honored that you made the time to do this. I really appreciate it. It's wonderful. And by the way, we set our time at high noon because that's an allusion to a great movie also. And that's what Sorbo is. He's the, he's the sheriff in high noon. How do you like that one, that's Kevin? Great, huh? great movie. Great right. movie. I'm a big because fan of his work as well. Yeah. I mean, this oh. is great stuff. So I have three quick questions for you. You ready? Yep. Number one. Will you come back again? 
I would love to. I'm gonna, I definitely want to come back in the fall when I've got some of these movies coming out because I think all four of them are going to come out kind of in a row, you know? So we, I, I, I wanted to get out there and give it a good plug, sure. Okay, we'll come back again. Number two, uh, are you ready? You have 80 seconds only to answer this question. All right. What is your most fervent desire? I, th I think it's really to be lucky enough and blessed enough to keep doing the type of movies that I'm doing, to find a way to find these things get funded. Because every time we've been funded for any of these independent movies, as I said before, three, $4 million is nothing in the vein of Hollywood. And uh, that's the budgets that I work with. And I do, I work with these movies that, that promote what I said earlier, the love, the, the laughter, the togetherness, the, the reality, the, 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 the push to bring people hopefully closer together than further apart. And I'm, 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 I, I, everything that I've been timed, every time I've been funded a movie, it's always been a God thing. Just about when you're about ready to give up. I work seven days a week. I don't, I don't stop working. And I'm always reaching out. I'm meeting people that are interested. Then you got to go through all these different avenues to try to get these people to explain to them how it works, how the movie industry works. Some are very knowledgeable. Some don't have any knowledge about it at all. And for me, I want to be able to do that to, to hopefully, um, without it sounding corny, but to, to get people more to the center. When I say that, just, just, just to get to the place where we can have differences, guys. But with the differences we have now, this Grand Canyon we've separated the world with right now, I, I'm, I'm hoping we find some way to build a bridge to get those things together. Right we now. like bridges. Yeah, bridges and, are, bridges are like, a good thing. I like corny. And I know. Um, speaking of corny, and number three is, without, even without your permission, may I give you a hug in front of 360? Sure, virtual hug, hugs. dude. Let me, let me tell you what hug stands for. Ready? I'm ready. Heartfelt, unlimited giving. That's good. Heartfelt, unlimited giving. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> it was a slow motion hug. I didn't, you didn't tell me you're going to put the special effect in there. <laughs> <laughs> and thank everybody for listening, tuning into the joy of living with your humble host, Barry Shore, and our amazing, wonderful guest, Kevin Sorbo. And remember, the three fundamentals of life. Life, your life has purpose. You live a purpose-driven life. You go mad. Mad stands for make a difference. And the third is to unlock the power and the sequence of everyday words and terms like WWW, what a wonderful world. Smile, seeing miracles in life every day, as my eight-year-old niece says, seeing miracles in everyday life. And learn to use the idea of create causing rethinking enabling all to excel yes kevin miracles happen every day but people expect the miracle to be walking on water great things happen every day we just don't pay attention anymore because we have attention spans of gnats we're so impatient we don't want to work hard to get to the goals we want to get to to me i tell people don't let anyone set your limitations especially yourself God never promised an easy life for all of us. Things are always going to go bad. We're going to hit roadblocks in life. How do you react to those roadblocks? You're going to blame God. You can blame a God you don't believe in. You can blame family, friends, what everybody else. Look in the mirror. Cue the Michael Jackson song, Man in the Mirror. There's the problem. Look at yourself and try to figure out a way to get past it because stuff happens. Poop happens, okay? So when it happens, find a way to get past it instead of letting it control your life and giving up and just becoming resentful for other people trying harder than you to push and find their dreams. Don't be afraid of it. You're going to get no's. You're going to get failure. Those are positive things, not negative things, because you learn from them. Is this not wondrous? <laughs> <laughs> Causing rethinking, enabling all to excel. Use four-letter words. Love, life, hope, grow, free, gift. Swim, pray, play, and tell the world to F you, capital N, capital N. When was the last time somebody said F you to you and you smiled, Kevin? F you, capital N, capital N. Remember to say thank you three times a day, every single day for the rest of your life. It'll bring benefit to you, to your family, to your friends, all living beings. And the result of all of this is you'll be happier, healthier, and wealthier. Who doesn't want that? So our blessing from Kevin and Barry is go forth, live exuberantly, spread the seeds of joy, happiness, peace, and love. Go mad. Go make a difference. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Joy of Living podcast. Now that's another step towards your healthier, happier, and wealthier life. 
Never hesitate to do good in the world, no matter what the situation. Join us for another upbeat discussion next time at VeryShore.com. And be sure to leave a rating and subscribe to the show to get more conversations like this. And remember to share it with your family and friends too. See you on the next episode.